Do you know what's in your water? Studies have shown over 2,000 chemicals present in U.S. water supplies. Hey guys, welcome back to Legacy by Sun Life Farming. I'm your host Jacob and today we're going to be talking all about water. First, let's go over some common chemicals that might be in your water. There's a large variety of these chemicals that your water district may be using and some are but are not limited to fluorine, chlorine, bleach, sodium hypochlorite, aluminum sulfate, phosphates, and more. Let's go over what some of these chemicals may do. So fluoride is toxic to humans and plants. Bleach is toxic to humans and plants. Sodium hypochlorite can cause irritation in the eyes, skin, respiratory, and gastrointestinal tracts. Exposure to high levels can even be fatal. Chlorine is another popular chemical that's used to sterilize the water. In large amounts, it can cause stomach aches, vomiting, diarrhea, and it can also cause dry and itchy skin. Severe chlorine poisoning may be even worse. If you receive a high enough liquid dose of chlorine, you can die. Chlorine can also interact with minerals in the water and turn into something called THMs which have been connected to heart disease, eczema, asthma, and even cancer. Another side effect of drinking these disinfectants is that you sterilize all the beneficial bacteria that live in your body and help with digestion and immune health. Furthermore, being the powerful biocide that it is, Chlorine and chloramine can kill off any beneficial microbes or fungi that are living in your soil. This is really troublesome because plants and fungi and microbes in the soil all have a synergistic relationship with each other and they all depend on each other. The fungi and microbes that you're killing off are vital to providing macro and micronutrients to the plant. They do this by making these micro and macronutrients bioavailable and water soluble so the plant roots can actually absorb them. Chloramine is another chemical that serves the same function as chlorine although it's combined with ammonium to make it more stable. If you remember from earlier those THMs that are a problem with chlorine aren't a problem with chloramine although the other downside is that chloramine is not easily evaporated off the water so it needs to be either filtered out or neutralized. An easy way to neutralize chloramine from your water is to add ascorbic acid at a rate of 1 gram per every 75 gallons of water. Ascorbic acid is also known as vitamin C and it's perfectly healthy and safe for humans and plants to consume. Cleaning the water of pathogens and bacteria is important, but it's certainly not healthy for humans or plants to be consuming these chemicals that they use to sterilize the water. A lot of these chemicals are present in tap water, and if you have aging pipes, you could be leaching heavy metals like iron and lead into your water as well. Water districts are always testing the water, and these tests are available as public record for you to go in and check on. You can check these easily by searching up your local water district on the internet, and then going and clicking on their website and finding the test that they provide. Provide. Your local water districts will have acceptable levels for these chemicals and heavy metals that are present in your water. Although these levels are not well researched and many consider these levels not strict enough. For instance, water is always purified before an organic gardener is brewing a microbial compost tea. This is because they know that the microbes that they're trying to propagate would not be able to survive in water containing these chemicals. The same is true with the soil in your garden. The microbes will not be able to survive if they're being exposed to all these nasty chemicals. The pH of the water is another important factor to take into consideration. The pH is important because it can affect the solubility of nutrients that your plants need to uptake. Most nutrients that plants uptake are only water soluble within the pHs between 5.5 and 6.5. So if you're watering with water outside of these ranges, you're bound to end up with nutrient lockout and nutrient deficiencies in your plants. Since pH is so important, you need to be able to adjust it. Thankfully, pH can be adjusted up and down very easily. You can either use general hydroponic pH up and down regulators, or you can use natural solutions like citric acid as a natural pH down regulator and potassium bicarbonate or wood ash as a natural pH up regulator. I heavily recommend that every gardener get some sort of pH testing meter for their water. The pH of your water is always subject to change and it's something that you're gonna need to be constantly checking. 
So having a quick and reliable way to do that is crucial as a gardener. Another thing to consider when looking at water is the PPM or the hardness of the water. And that is basically taking a look at what type of minerals are in your water and how much of those minerals are in your water. The problem with water being too hard is that it can affect the pH of the water. And as I said earlier, the pH of the water is crucial in the nutrient uptake for the plants. So if you have water that's too hard, you're gonna end up with nutrient lockout and nutrient deficiencies. This happens because the excess of minerals in the water form bonds with the water soluble nutrients. And after they form bonds, the nutrients are no longer water soluble, so the plant can't uptake them and you get nutrient lockout. Let's take a look at the PPM levels and what they mean. A PPM of zero to 70 is considered very soft water. This is the type of water that you would be getting out of an RO filter or a reverse osmosis filter. A PPM of 70 to 140 is considered soft water. 140 to 210 is considered slightly hard water. And 210 to 320 is considered hard water. Anything above 320 is considered very hard water. And once you start getting too far above a parts per million of 200, you're gonna end up with nutrient lockout and nutrient deficiencies in your plants. For plants, a great PPM to aim for is around 125 to 150, although they can handle higher levels. Water runoff from mountains naturally picks up minerals as it runs over the rock face, so the plants are used to slightly hard water in nature. Some of these minerals can actually be used by the plant after they're broken down by the microbial life in the soil and made water soluble and available to the plant for uptake. Since naturally plants receive slightly hard water, when you're watering them with RO water, they're going to end up with some nutrient deficiencies if you're not making up for it by amending with some sort of rock dust to add your trace minerals back in. Some examples could be basalt, azomite, and glacial rock dust, just to name a few. With no way to get around these chemicals being used in your municipal water, Gardeners need to have some sort of alternative to get clean water. This is where water filtration systems come in. A good water filtration system will remove all of the nasty chemicals and hardness from your water. Let's first start off by looking at the cheapest and most basic option, a hose end filter. These hose end filters are really simple. You just attach it to the end of your hose and the water that pumps out is gonna be filtered to whatever degree the filter is rated for. The best type of hose end filters are called carbon block filters and they're able to reduce pesticides, heavy metals, chemicals, and most PPM contaminants. These filters are really good if you have relatively good water already and you're not worried about any bacteria or pathogens being present in the water. A step up from hose end filters is RO water filters. These are some of the most thorough filters at cleaning the water. These filters can remove algae, bacteria, mold spores, lime scale, heavy metals, chemicals, and all sorts of contaminants from the water, as well as reducing the PPM down to very soft water, like I mentioned earlier. Another good tip is using a hose that's not made of plastic, as this will leach microplastics into your water when the sun shines on the hose, and then you're gonna be introducing microplastics into your garden. The best way to avoid this is to get a hose that's not made out of plastic. The next step up from a simple RO filter would be to get a comprehensive water purification unit. These units will cleanse your water throughout multiple stages. First, starting with a stage that's similar to an RO filter, and then moving on to a UV light that shines on the water and sterilizes it. And then at the end, the most expensive models even have ionizer technologies where they use a process of electrodialysis to charge the water with only the positive ions. The end result is high quality alkaline and ionized water. This water is really good for human drinking and consumption, although it's not totally necessary for your plants. Quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by any water filtration companies. All right guys, so that's the video. Hope you guys learned something and enjoyed. Until next time, thanks for watching.